Hi guys, um, yeah, so, I'm here to keep my claim on my title as being really fucking unlucky. So I bet you're wondering why I'm recording here instead of not at the TwitchCon after party. Here's why. Because, you see, I didn't want to walk the 15, 16 blocks to the TwitchCon after party. And the reason for that is because it's really goddamn cold outside. So I decided to call an Uber. Now, I'd never actually used Uber, okay? So I installed my phone, called the guy over here, everything goes good, the driver's great, everything's going great, uh, Elise and I get to the party, I don't have my ticket. So I felt that I left it in my car, you know? And I'm like, I must have left it in my car. So I have to call another Uber driver, they finally pick me up, they take me back here, and what do you know, it's not in the car. So the only other place it could be is that I lost it in the first Uber ride over there. So, I am sitting here and doing nothing, so I figured, hey, might as well record a video about the TwitchCon stuff, you know, that went on, because I have nothing else to do. So, uh, TwitchCon itself was really awesome. Uh, no real complaints, besides just not really having food in there. They had, like, you know, convention food, but, like, that made me a little bit sick. So I was like, yeah, but... <clears throat> Otherwise, got to see a lot of people who uh, I've talked to on Twitch many times and so forth. A lot of people who were my viewers, a lot of people that I've uh, collaborated with, you know, stuff like that. It was just really, really interesting, like, uh, getting, you know, some of these people I've known for a very long time and getting to actually see them in person. I uh, got to meet a lot of new people who I had seen in passing on Twitch and stuff like that, you know, seen in my channel, seen in other people's channels like that, like uh, Hero of Gaming, The 8-Bit Drummer, for example, um, I saw uh, Rakib Marvelous for, I think, like the fourth or fifth time at an event now. Um, Seltzer, I seem to keep on running into at events, like almost every single time I'm like at something competitive or something else like that. She seems to be like the announcer, it's like hilarious. And uh, I got to uh, see Man vs. Game again. Um, Elise got to see a lot of people and stuff like that that she, uh, you know, has known over the years, gotten to hang out with. Um, got to uh, see now, um, like, the 8-bit drummer and so forth, you know. It's like he plays video game covers on his real drum set, you know. And uh, we got to play Lightning Bolt together on Rock Band, man. And I know there's people I'm forgetting that I met and stuff like that. Uh, Sonos, um, the lead producer on Star Siege, on uh, Tribes of Sind, and now I guess the head producer of uh, Paladin, or Paladin, sorry, um, which I got to play, and it's really, really an awesome game. I'm definitely going to be streaming that. It's like a mix of a MOBA and FPS, and I don't even know what else. Uh, friggin' Hearthstone, I don't know, it's it's really hard to, like, uh, describe just in words, but it's a really, really fun game, and no, I'm not being paid to say this. Um, he, apparently, was a really big fan of my Rock Band stuff back in the day, and, uh, ironically enough, in sort of a, like, you know, twist here, he charted the song Footloose and Fancy Free, which, uh, a lot of you may not know this, is one of my absolute favorite RBN songs in Rock Band of all time. Like, when that got on there... I loved playing that song. I think I even, like, uh, I got the song listened to it on my MP3 player. It's a really, really fun jazz song on drums. And when that came out, I was like, where's more of this? Where's more of these charts on there? You know, and I never really saw much else like it. So, um, the, uh, the, the dude was an, a big fan of mine, high res Mick. Um, so that was awesome to see. You know, again, it's, it's one of the, it was funny. It was like, it was re flattering each other. It's like, you're the guy that worked on one of my favorite jump charts and one of my favorite FPS games, Tribes Ascend. And he's like, you're the guy that, you know, I've always watched your rock band videos trying to figure out how to beat the songs. And so it was like, it, it was just a trip when I had instances like that, you know. Um, I talked to a few other game developers and stuff like that too, and it was funny because it was like, a man, I really like your games. I've played them for a long time. Oh, you know, like, well, uh, do you do anything on Twitch? I'm like, yeah, Maserate Reaction. They're like, oh, shit, I like watch your drum videos. And and it, it was just a trip, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, I got to see uh, I got to see Swifter again. Talked to him for a little bit. Um, the if you missed it, the rock band competition and stuff like that was really interesting. Um, definitely, we'll be hopefully putting up videos of that and stuff like that on uh, YouTube, etc. And um, definitely. Uh, check out the VODs, the video on demand, for me playing League of Legends with and against I'm a Cutie Pie, the Odd One, and Trick2G. And a whole bunch of uh, random people that came to it. But come on. Like...
I don't know how I got into that event, but there were some crazy kills I got in that game. Like, I got, uh, I killed the odd one, and I'm a cutie pie both with snowballs and ARAM. And I got some crazy ass double kills. I mean, again, I'm not saying I'm anywhere near their skill level, but I played probably the best I've ever played in my life against those guys. Like, I was really focused trying to not suck compared to them. And, you know, I didn't do as good as them, but it was pretty amazing playing and streaming and stuff like that with them. So, that was pretty cool. Uh, playing Paladin and stuff, I played uh, the same class as Swifter did. So, it was pretty funny to uh, kick his butt and a lot of the, uh, you know, kind of shootouts we had. We had two, like, kind of scout characters that were really fast. Um, the actual event was neat. I liked a lot of the uh, uh, panel, like, event type things that went on, you know, like on the Kappa Theater and all that stuff. Um, I liked a lot of the first floor stuff. Um, I'll never forget the sign for the Indie Gaming Theater, though. It's like, the Taco Bell Indie Gaming Theater, powered by XSplit. I, like, found that was just, like, hilariously ironic. It's like, you know, Indie Games with Taco Bell and XSplit. Yeah! And I was like, okay, that was, that was a hell of a thing to name that. Um, I didn't get to play a lot of the games I wanted to, like Street Fighter uh, Five and stuff like that, but that's no big deal. They'll be out eventually. Um, Rock Band uh, was really fun to get to play with a lot of, you know, like, my viewers and stuff like that. Um, again, I played Lightning Bolt by, um, Dream Genie on Expert Drums, and, uh, the 8-bit drummer did guitar, and, um, his friend, oh, I know two of his friends were named, I want to say Kyle and Chris, but I don't think that's right, but I want to say Chris, and I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, I know it started with a C, I want to say that's it, um, played on bass, and then we had uh, some random dude from the crowd got caught up to play vocals. That song, like, I mean, you know me. You know I like, like, crazy-ass bullshit songs on, like, drums and stuff like that. That song is insane. I remember seeing the chart for it before and thinking, man, this will probably be full combo in a day or two. This is, I mean, it's really good, you know, it's not that bad. When you play it, holy bejesus. Like, most drums, most drum songs that are really, really difficult have a break somewhere in the song that allows you to catch your breath, let your legs and your arms kind of get a break, you know? This didn't have that. This didn't have any breaks. It's like the constant bass pedal of the constant bass pedal parts of like Clouds Over California or This Calling or something like that, but for seven minutes. So imagine doing like the intro to This Calling, but a little bit slower for seven minutes. And then on top of that, you're doing... Uh, you're not just doing this, you know, do 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 unlike the actual, you know, drum pads, you're doing like polyrhythms and paradiddles and, you know, fast rolls and crossovers and uh, you know, double stroking all over the place. And again, no break on that, no mercy. That song is easily, in my opinion, the hardest set list song on rock band four and definitely or definitely one of the hardest or definitely the hardest set list song on rock band four drums. And probably the hardest set list song in all of Rock Band drums for the set list. Not again, count. I'm not counting the DLC, but for the set list, absolutely insane. Um, I didn't really get to see the guitar or bass or vocals that much because I was like blowing my legs off trying to play it. Um, from what I heard though from the 8-bit drummer and from Chris, they were both really brutal bass and guitar charts also. So definitely looking forward to that. Um, got to uh, talk to, like I said, a lot of really neat people. Um, Got to, uh, I was in a band for the rock band thing with, um, Cream, uh, Haley, I know that's her name, it's like Haley, I forget how her, like, online name is, it's like H-A-Y-I-L-C-N, something like that, I can, I can never pronounce it right, I'm sorry, um, and, uh, Eddie Ruckus, and, uh, that was fun, got to, uh, uh, talk to Biznap, um, Score Hero Olby, uh, Witwix was there, talked to him for a little bit. Uh, Joe Numbers, another score hero, old B. Um, a lot of people, man. It was just, it was just crazy. It was a, it, this is a, you know it's supposed to be an event for uh, the for people who are new to Twitch streaming, you know, to like learn a lot about it and stuff like that and learn about what to do. But I felt it came off more like an event for all the broadcasters to get together and meet each other for the first time and hang out with each other because. I mean, if, like, every day was, like, like, every, both days was, like, you know, every hour or so, I was meeting up with somebody new, that, you know, oh, hey, you know, you watch my streams, or you stream too, or, oh, I used to watch your streams, oh, I watched your streams, yeah, nah, nah, nah. I went to, like, you know, eat with a bunch of these people and stuff like that, big old groups and everything, and it just, 
it you know what it really reminded me of? It reminded me of like the old days of rhythm games like DDR and stuff like that when you go to like a DDR tournament and there'd be all these people you'd talk to online for like years and it'd be like, oh yeah man, I, I you know, heard you like got this score and this score and whatever and it, it just reminded me of that kind of like tight knit community type feeling where you know, you go to these things and you have these big, uh, you know, 40 people groups going to like diners and stuff like that and talking about their own experiences with, you know, DDR except here, it'd be for streaming, you know, it'd be like, oh my stream did this and I had this happen on stream and stuff like that. And it was just really neat. I really hope they have another TwitchCon. The only thing I'd say is definitely have um, more... Make the first floor bigger, I think, for a lot of the game stuff, you know? And I would think make the second floor a little bit more condensed, maybe. Again, this is my opinion. I realize a lot of people did find that stuff valuable. I'm just saying, just, you know, I think... Uh, I, more than anything, it's not even about making the second floor smaller. I would say just make the first floor open longer. Because both days... I got off the uh, streaming thing, I got off the gaming lab, I was on it from 1.30 to like 6, and then the bottom floor is closed. And it's like, you know, I would have loved to go around there and try out like Street Fighter, play more Rock Band, go uh, try the other indie games, talk to some people at the booths, you know. But I think a lot of the really interesting stuff at the convention was already closed at 6 o'clock, you know. And then it's like the theater and the other places stayed open until like 9 or 10. And it's like, I think that that should stay open that long, at the very least, the first floor, because there was so many different vendors and things packed in there. So definitely keep that floor open at the very least, you know, if you're not going to add to it, etc. I think adding to that would be good. I think um, uh, a lot of... Um, I think, again, having food there and so forth would be great. I think... Uh, you know, again, this is the first TwitchCon. There's obviously a lot of stuff, you know, that, like, they're learning from this and figuring out, you know. The idea that a... The, the, even the idea that you get paid to stream to play video games was an alien idea, not even, like, six or seven years ago. And now there's a whole convention specifically for the people that do this for a living, you know. And that's just crazy. So it's like, I think as the years go on, it will get bigger, it'll get a lot better, there'll be a lot more stuff to do, there'll be a lot more vendors, there'll be a lot whatever else, you know. Um, you know this whole video? I've just been constantly... Well, fuck me. Okay, well, that's not good. My battery might be dead in my car. I might be stranded in San Francisco, so I'm gonna go now. Bye, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you don't see me walking on the streets homeless, because I don't have any way to get back home. Later, guys.